Okay, in this video, I want to start talking about an introduction to some basic math proof techniques. And whether you're just simply interested in mathematics as a hobby, maybe you're thinking about being a math major, maybe you're taking classes like computer science or linear algebra, and you're kind of in, in, finally encountering some, some math uh, some questions where you have to actually prove things mathematically. This is just going to be a quick little overview. It's by no means comprehensive. I mean, there's there's entire books dedicated to this stuff. So I'm certainly just going to hit the highlights over the course of the next few videos. So this one's going to be just, you know, unfortunately me reading a bit. I'm not going to go through a lot of stuff. I'm just going to talk about some terminology here at the beginning. So what we're going to talk about Basically, in this video, we're going to talk about what are known as statements and logical operations. And then we're also going to briefly discuss this idea of quantifiers. In the next video, I'm going to look at sort of four fundamental proof techniques. There's what's known as a direct proof, also called a proof by construction. There's proof by contradiction. There's proof by induction and proof by contrapositive. You may have even seen a proof by induction even like in a pre-algebra class or a, a, a calculus class. A pre, probably, excuse me, probably not pre-algebra, but pre-calculus. You may have seen some, some induction. I've definitely got videos on proof by induction that were geared towards high school students. So in the next video, I'm going to prove a very simple statement, but I'm going to prove the same statement using all four different techniques just to give you a flavor. And then in some other videos, I'll do some variations. I'll do some, you know, uh, direct proof, proof by contradiction, induction, contrapositive, just some different random examples. Again, they're not necessarily going to be the most complicated uh, uh, problems, but again, just to give you a feel and a quick little introduction. So... So let's talk about statements and logical operations. So a mathematical statement is, it is a statement that's either true or false, but not both. So let's look at these next five statements, and let's consider which of these are uh, considered mathematical statements. So six is an even integer. Well, that has a truth value, and it, well, it's in fact, it's true. So we would say, yes, this is a mathematical statement. 10 is an odd integer. Well, again, that has a truth value, and it turns out, right, it's false. 10 is actually an even integer, but that is still considered a mathematical statement because it is, it's a statement that's either true or false. Well, it happens to be, happens to be false. And again, so just to highlight three and four, they don't have to necessarily deal with mathy things. It's just, again, a statement that has a, a truth value to it. So Austin is the capital of Texas. That is considered a mathematical statement because, well, it is true. Austin is the capital of Texas. Number four, Austin is the best city in the world. Well, we wouldn't consider that one a mathematical statement because, well, it doesn't really have a truth value, right? You can, you can argue about that all day long. Uh, personally, Austin is certainly one of my favorite cities in the world. And let's see, another statement, 2 plus 2 equals 5. Hey, yeah, again, that is a mathematical statement because it has a truth value. Again, it turns out to be false, but it would still be considered a mathematical statement. So a lot of times you'll often see, it seems like you always see P's and Q's. It's kind of like X and Y when you do algebra. You see P's and Q's to denote statements. So, for example, the, little, the lowercase letter P could denote the statement that 2 plus 2 equals 5. You could summarize that. You could say that's the statement P. And, for example, uh, 10 is an odd integer. You could call that the statement Q. So those, those letters, if you see P's and Q's, we're going to be talking about statements. So just like there's mathematical operations, you can add, subtract, multiply, divide. There are also what are known as logical operations, and those are ways to combine or modify statements. So we'll talk about what are known as and statements, or statements, not statements, and if-then statements. We're also going to talk about a couple others, too. I think I also mentioned here we're going to talk about if and only if statements and contrapositive. But those are really just sort of special cases using some of these other logical operations. So all of these two have an associated truth value. So again, if you've done truth tables or maybe you've seen taken a logic class, you certainly will enc encounter this type of stuff in, in other settings as well besides a math class. Uh, again, I'm thinking specifically about, say, a logic class or something where you're doing computer science. Maybe you're making truth tables or something like that. Okay, so let's talk about not statements first. 
So if P is a statement, then not P is defined to be, so again, we're going to talk about truth value. Not P is going to be true if the original statement P is false. So not P is true if P is false, and vice versa. Not P will be false when P is true. So the statement not P is often called the negation of P, and it's denoted, some, I've seen a couple different notations. There's almost like this little, uh, this little bar with the arm on it that would be read not P. I've even seen like a little, a little twist or a little tilde, so not P. But the one that I've most commonly seen is the one with the little, the little bar here, and that's the one that I'm going to use. So a couple, other here, a couple others here real quick. Um, we've got and statements. So if P and Q are two statements, then the statement P and Q is defined to be true when both of the original statements P and Q are true, and it's false if either statement P or Q is false, or if they're both false. And again, there's different notation. Um, so a lot of times the notation you'll see is the little, uh, it looks like a little carrot. The way I kind of remember this notation, so P and Q, this little, this little carrot almost looks like, if we added the, the, you know, the extra bar, it would look like the letter A. So P and Q, right? And starts with the letter A. So that's how I remember it. Or statements. So if P and Q are two statements, then the statement P or Q is defined to be it's true when either P is true or Q is true, or both P and Q are true. And it's false only when both P and Q are false. So a little uh, um, um, just remark here, when I say don't confuse this with the typical usage for the word or in the English language, because a lot of times when, you, when we use the word or in English, it, we kind of assume that maybe one statement's true, but the other one's not. And here, the or statement can be true if they're both true. So, for example, if I said, you know, Patrick got an A on the math test or Sally got an A on the math test, most people would think of that as saying, well, one of either Patrick or Sally got an A on the math test, but, but not both of them. But when we talk about it in a mathematical setting, if I said Patrick got an A on the math test or Sally got an A on the math test, it could be true that both people got an A on the math test. So that's just one thing to remember when you think about truth values of these statements. Just a little distinction, distinction between how we use it in, in uh, um, everyday English, I think. So just be careful about that. Other very common, uh, very common, oh, and I should say one last little thing here. So the little symbol that we use for the, the, the word or, we just flip, right? We have the upper carrot or whatever you want to call it for A. We flip that over, and that would be read the statement P or Q. Okay, if then statements. So again, if P and Q are statements, then the statement if P then Q is defined to be it's true when both P and Q are both true, or if the initial statement P is false, and it's false when P is true and Q is false. So it's, it's, an, it's an implication. And we denote it, we put a little, uh, a little arrow, P, if P then Q. And just a little more terminology, if the statement P is false, we say that P implies Q is vacuously true. So an example of a vacuously true statement, again, it's when you're starting with a false statement, you could say, um, if the moon is made of cheese, then Pat Patrick is the president of the United States. That would be a, a true statement, a vacuously true statement. There's kind of no, no substance to it, right? The original statement is nonsense, I guess is kind of how I think about it. Another remark, we can talk about the converse of two statements. So the converse of P implies Q, or if P then Q, we just flip them around, is Q implies P. So notice, even though if the implication P implies Q is true, it's, it's not necessarily true that Q implies P. You can't just flip them around and say, oh, the original one's true, and so is the other one. So just kind of one example I was thinking off the top of my head. Um, so if Patrick uh, loves all teams in basketball, then Patrick loves the Boston Celtics, right? Okay, I think most of you... Are probably are watching this in USA, the Boston Celtics are right, or a basketball team. So if Patrick likes all basketball teams, then Patrick likes the Boston Celtics, okay, that if we assume that's true. The flip of that necessarily is not true, right? If Patrick likes the Boston Celtics, then Patrick likes all basketball teams. Well, maybe the only team I like is the Boston Celtics. It could be true, but it's, uh, you can't just conflate the truth value of, of, of the two. 
All right, a couple more things here. Again, I know we're having fun. This is just kind of the basics, um, just because we're going to be using this stuff in, in some of the other videos. So, okay, if and only if statements. These are basically implications that point both ways. So if P and Q are statements, then the statement P if and only if Q is defined to be it's true when both P and Q are both true or both false. So this compound statement P if and only if Q, that has a true value if both statements are true or both are false. And this compound statement is, is false when one of P or Q is true and the other one is false. So basically when they don't have the same truth values, P and Q, then this if and only if statement um, is, is considered false. So if this if and only if statement, P if and only if Q is true, we say that P and Q are what are known as equivalent. Equivalent in the sense that their truth values are the same. So another very in important uh, proof technique that we'll use, and we saw that at the beginning, is going to be proof by contrapositive. And contrapositive, you're basically just combining some negations and some implications. So I know I've done in some other videos, we've looked at, you can, you can prove how um, statements have the same truth value, and I can certainly direct you to one of those if you want to see that. Uh, but the contrapositive of the statement P implies Q, or if P then Q, is we say not Q implies not P, or if not Q then not P. What's important is that these two statements are logically equivalent, which means if the first statement is true, so is the other one and vice versa. So if you can show that P implies Q, you have also proved that not Q implies not P. And this is going to be important because a lot of times what you're going to do is you, maybe you want to show that if P then something else follows. A lot of times it's easier to flip that statement around and show the contrapositive instead. And we'll see some examples of that as well. So the last thing really briefly here, just terminology. I know this is probably um, not the most exciting thing. But again, just some background because we'll be using this. So quantifiers. So suppose we consider this following sentence, x is even. This is not a statement because it doesn't have a truth value. We don't know what x is, so we can't claim anything about it being even or not. So this is not a mathematical statement. But we could modify this to make a statement. We could basically say something like, oh, when x is 10, x is even. This is now a mathematical statement. Or we could say something for like, for every integer x, x is even. Well, okay, so uh, maybe that's not quite true, but it's still a mathematical statement. So lastly, we could say there exists an integer x such that x is even. That's another way to, to make the, the, these, these are all, again, mathematical statements. So when we talk about these phrases for every or there exists, those are what are known as quantifiers. And you'll often see the notation, you'll see like a little upside down a that denotes for all. And you'll see a little backward E, that means that there exists. So just shorthand for, for all and there exists. So I may use some of that in some other videos. Okay, so that's it for the boring terminology. Uh, stay tuned for some actual proof videos. Again, the, 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 the examples I'm going to do are going to be very simple. Again, just to give you a flavor on how to use these different, those four proof techniques that we talked about at the very beginning. Uh, those four proof techniques, again, Direct proof, contradiction, induction, contrapositive. And then we'll also go on to do some that are slightly more complicated and hopefully more interesting to you.